All right, so what I'm about to explain is going to get kind of reiterated throughout uh, the videos from time to time, but uh, it's never really stated explicitly right up front, and I thought that's what we should uh, talk about. So let, let's look at this function, talk about it uh, real quick. If you remember from our experience with geometric series, this is the sum of an infinite geometric series. Remember, a geometric series looks like we go from n equals 0 to infinity of some a times some r to the n power. Uh, so that's going to wind up being like we put 0 in there, we're going to get a, then we're going to get, we're going to add to that uh, a times r, and then we're going to add to that a times r squared plus a times r to the third, right? And if we do this for infinity, now this condition is important. The absolute value of r, of course, needs to be less than 1. Otherwise, this would just be getting better, bigger. But uh, the terms will get smaller as long as r is less than 1. And uh, if we add this all up, it will equal a over 1 minus r. Okay, That's from uh, back in the day a bit. It's not that long ago. But if we let uh, a be 1 and r be x, then we get 1 plus 1x plus 1x squared plus 1x to the third, and this becomes 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, So if we have a function that looks something like this, then we can expand it, right? Like this function would be equal to uh, 1 plus x plus x squared plus x to the third plus x to the fourth and so on and so on and so on. Very simple polynomial, right? Uh, a infinite degree polynomial where uh, the constant is 1 and you know, the coefficient of every x is 1. So if we can make our functions look something like this, then we will have uh, a power series that will be equal to our function. Uh, and if our function is equal to this power series, uh, generally, if we can work our way backwards to this guy here, uh, then we can find a way to um, find the value of this power series, this infinite power series, uh, by this expression here. Okay, uh, you know, and, and we can change things about it. Like, say this was a, was something other than one. Say it was a. Well, then we could just rewrite that as a times one over one minus x this much is equal to that, right? So it would just be equal to a times all of that, and so on. And just everything would have an a next to it, a plus ax plus ax squared, and so on and so on and so on. Okay. Uh, it's something could, like we could have something in here with x, that would work fine. Uh, like we could have a times 1 over 1 minus <clears throat> x plus 1, right? And it, from our experience with uh, power functions, uh, or pa power series, Taylor polynomials, Maclaurin polynomials, this would be like this function, except for instead of centered at 0, it would be centered at negative 1. Uh, so this would be equal to a uh, plus a times x plus 1 plus a times x plus 1 squared and so on and so on and so on. And we could change this to a 2x, we could change this to an x squared. If we can write our, our, uh, our function that's given somehow like this, then we have a power series that equals this, uh, this function. Now sometimes we're going to do that by just by some kind of algebraic trickery. Sometimes we'll have a function that if we took the derivative or antiderivative of, it would look something like this, okay? So like if I wanted to a, a power series that is equal to the natural log of x plus 1. Well, this doesn't look like, uh, remember this, this started out as 1 over 1 uh, minus x. So here, well, I'll just leave it like that. Uh, so this doesn't look like that, but you know what does? Uh, its derivative looks kind of like this, right? If I took the derivative of this, it would be equal to 1 over x plus 1, which looks kind of like that if I write it like this, 1 over 1 minus uh, negative x, 
Let me rewrite that so that looks good. 1 minus negative x. I'll get it. Negative x. Okay. And now we can use this right here. So uh, if this is equal to uh, equal to uh, what would it be equal to? 1 uh, since this is negative x, that'd be negative. That'd be minus x. That'd be plus x squared minus x to the third, and so on. Uh, and then, so if, if this is equal to that, uh, if I took the antiderivative of this, I would get the natural log of x plus one, right? So I'd have to take the antiderivative of this. So the antiderivative of this is equal to the natural log of x plus 1, right? And so we use those kinds of manipulations as well. So uh, the, the videos go through those more in detail. I just wanted to show you what's going on. We're trying to get pretty much every function that's given to us, uh, tie it back to something that looks like 1 over 1 minus x, because it is attached to a power series, a simple power series. It could be manipulated. There could be little multiples put in there. The thing that we're subtracting here, it can be changed. Okay, but that's what it all centers around. How are we going to get the function that's given to us to relate back somehow to this, whether by antiderivatives or derivatives, simple algebra, uh, partial fractions, all these different kinds of things? How do we tie it back to something that looks like that? Um, and that's it. Ask me if you have any questions. Absolutely.